group, and this was a good one. Um, so it's a little bit different from the normal ones that you get, but it, it's a good question. Makes you think a little bit. You said uh, if you take away the nostalgia factor, which you know obviously a lot of things we remember way more fondly than they actually are. Yeah. And, uh, you, you think about some of the 64 games you go back to play or PS1, some of the early 3D games where at the time you're like, this is amazing, and you go back now and it's just like, I can't do it, you know. But uh, they ask the question, taking away that, take away the nostalgia factor, what makes older games so good? Oh, boy. Well, yeah. and that was uh, – thanks, Ryan Williams, for the question, by the way. Right. So right. I'll throw that out there. But um, I, so, honestly, for me, I, I would say – not much is different than what makes a good game now, but to me, what what really sells it is that the technology was so much more limited. Um, yeah. So that's, I, that's I feel insane. like it's you know when you look at especially at the Atari when it was you know just so bare bones, but um, you know the, it was all about replayability. The only thing that you could do was play it for five, ten, fifteen minutes at a time, um, and that was it. That was all you had. Got to get that high score. Uh, but the, it, yeah, That's or, true. you know, playing against people or whatever. My my big go-to on the Atari was Kaboom. I used to play that a lot. Um, but when you look at things like NES and things started to expand, uh, yeah. it became more about, uh, I mean, maybe I guess a little bit by graphics, but um, it was more about story and just playability. You know, you start th seeing things like the Final Fantasy starts emerging and uh, Dragon Warrior or Dragon Quest, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it, and... Um, you know, you you started also getting kind of uh, a lot of the shovelware people would throw at it, like they did with Atari, because it was kind of all Atari was was throwing everything at it and seeing what stuck. Um, but with NES and with uh, I mean any subsequent system and the technology expanding, you had a lot more to work with. And so, um, for me, like I said, with with any really even up to the modern day, but. Um, it was always playability, uh, story if it's you know story-based game, um, and so those are the things that make a game like, uh, for example, Star Tropics. I think Rico will agree with me on that one. Oh, Star Tropics, um, fantastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it, you know the original Zelda's. It's like it, it doesn't matter that it's out for the original Nintendo. You know that that the graphics were goofy and that it was all still in its infancy it was it was a good game the mechanics were good the layout was good the story was pretty good um you know so it's it's not just memorable because it's nostalgic it's memory memorable because it's actually a, just a good game that's true and um kind of touching base upon that too like you said a lot of these games were based on limitations and just um just the way it is and <laughs> i know you guys grew up with the nes and atari and, oh, we did. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, being a millennial, I, I did grow here, up with the 64. It yeah, yeah, it it, there you go. There you go. Nate already knows where I'm going with this. But I'm um, so young. I, yeah, actually, I feel old. But, um, but the thing is about, I grew up with the 64. I grew up with DOS and MS-DOS and everything like that. And I think with, with the 64, it was um, something I liked about it was that, um, yeah, it did have a lot of nostalgia for me, but it was the first time you saw a 3D environment. But when you play that today, it really has not aged well at all. So um, one of the things that made, I think, it great, that made the console so great was, in a way, its limitations. It was kind of testing the ground, testing new boundaries. And um, if we kind of take that away, you know, maybe some of the games haven't aged well literally due to graphics, and that's completely understandable. But, you know, this um, this was like the first stepping stone into a legitimate new world. And for a lot of people, it it just blew their minds. For me, it, it, it completely blew my mind to see a game, like to play any game like Halloween Harry or Monster Bash, which were 2D side-scrolling MS-DOS games, and then come into Super Mario 64, and you have a 3D plane, a three-dimensional environment that you could have just explore, you know, a lot of these games, they do, they haven't aged well. And 64 compared to like NES and SNES, they really haven't aged well. But there really is a lot going on with it. And I think personally, that's, um, even though there is some nostalgia, there is a lot to look back on. And that's kind of what makes games today. And if anything, we kind of take it for granted now. Well, well I think that, 
Oh, go ahead, John. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, uh, what Josh and what Rico was talking about, you know, if you look at the Nintendo, uh, the Nintendo days, there was a challenge to games. The games had puzzles and things like that, and, you know, to learn what to do, you actually had to get in the game and just play it. Um, you know, with the Final Fantasies, like in Super NES days, you know, there was puzzles and things you had to do with trying to learn, like, what to cast and when to cast it and where to find things that were hidden. And, yeah, they had some, some strategy guides out there, but most people didn't even want them back then. You know, you might get one, but you toss it aside and you just get in there and just play the damn game. Um, and nowadays, we just don't seem like we get to do that as much anymore. But, you know, like when the N64, you know, um, yeah, the graphics hasn't carried over well. Um, but, you know, we also got the taste of this 3D environment. And I think for a lot of people, the nice thing about the 3D environment, what it offered was, you know, we had these games that could utilize that with multiplayer. GoldenEye, that's why it's so nostalgic for the N64, is that you could grab all your buddies and play it before the days where you had everything linked together and you were doing it. And we things. still like, do. I will tell you mm-hmm. this. We, yeah. We still play it locally. And I mean, like, Literally two weeks ago, I, I had a bunch of homies, and we were playing snowboard kids. Out of all things, you know, and <laughs> you know, it 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 just goes to show you that even though these games are old, people still play them for a specific reason, and they still play the emulators for a specific reason. You know, these games, I think they kind of transcend nostalgia, and it's they're just good. If anything, yeah. well, I'll it's, say well, this about that generation, like especially the Nintendo sixty four, like. That generation, 64, PlayStation. That Saturday, generation. And all of the, the the gaming generation, not your generation, Rico. But that, that generation of gaming, 64, PlayStation, Saturn, and then you get into like 3DO and all the other offshoots. Mm-hmm. Uh, it aged so much more poorly than the 2D. Yeah. Because absolutely. of the fact that we haven't gone really to anything else unless you count VR, and it's not. It's not the next big thing necessarily. It's not like going from 2D to 3D gaming. It's kind of a sad thing. But we're used to HD graphics. Then you go back to the the muddy PS1 or 64 yeah, graphics. The thing. But I, I will say this: if you'll spend any, uh, this is my advice to someone who wants to go back and experience 64 PS1. Spend a whole night playing just the Nintendo 64. By the end of the night, the games will look better. You'll forget how bad they look. Get the Get the burned-in HD images out of your head and just let the 64 be what it is. Magic. Enjoy mm-hmm. it. Get with Rico. Play some local multiplayer. Right? Hey, man, if you guys are ever in the L.A. area, you know, I'm always down the street. I'm 64. That's, uh, you know, you brought that up. That's one of the big things that's that's missing from most of today's games is everything's online. And that's that's great. It's it's. It's great to have the ability to connect with everyone, but it's nothing like four people sitting at the same TV playing GoldenEye, or Mario Kart, or Smash Brothers, the original Smash Brothers. And oh my God, it, it, it's it's just kind of crazy. And, and now that you mention it, like a lot of these new games, um, when you just go out to parties or anything, yeah, you see them playing some of the newer HD games. But you know, as soon as someone just brings an older console, you know, GameCube N64, we kind of, you know, we get, we get the sense of, oh, now it's a party because four people can join. <laughs> and it really makes you think, you know, all of these games are just online based now. There's no, literally, you do not hear the word local multiplayer on games anymore. It's literally finite. And that's a sad thing because there are a lot of people who go over to other people's houses and we play these games, you know. There's a reason why people still play Smash or they play Mario Tennis because these games involve four people more, hopefully. Well, that's look at that's the games that are actually um, doing well nowadays. You know, the things that are really enticing kids. You've got like Five Nights yeah. at Freddy's, okay? Five Nights at Freddy's, you know, it kind of makes you imagine, you know, like what's going on with the story because they're just giving you tidbits every time they release another one. Okay, that captures, you know, imagination, and that's something that we're we're losing in games because they're just spoon feeding this uh, playthrough. You just walk down a straight line, you shoot these things, or you do these quests that are glowing. What you have to click and do, and <laughs> to me, that's yeah. not exciting. That's not exciting anymore. Um, you know, when I play multiplayer games, you're right. You have to have a whole other console in another room if you want to play with someone else, and exactly. that's ridiculous. I should be able to have four controllers and play it, but my kids. When they play stuff, they're wanting to play Minecraft. They're wanting to play Terraria. They're wanting to play, um, you know, games 
I mean, just whatever kind of game that has, you know, multiplayer where you can sit with each other and actually do it together. And, you know, I mean, there's so few of those. You know, thank God Minecraft exists for kids because I don't, I, I mean, I would be mortified trying to teach them anything else to play. You know, it's to teach them to be alone or it's to teach them to <laughs> meet up with strangers online, you know? I mean, <laughs> and while that's fine, scary, that's fine. Honestly. It really yeah, is. I mean, it's, it's, it's fine to, to play games and things like that. You know, but I want them to be able to invite their friends over to come over and hang out and do stuff with them. And that I've actually been buying retro consoles and just giving it to them. I'm like, here, here's a GameCube for your room. Go play it. Go have fun with your friends. And they love it more than they do the PlayStation 4. Because it's still fun. On there, it's it still is. engaging. And and, and it, it kind of comes down to it. It's not really the age of the console anymore. And time has proved that. It's how good the games are. The games have been meant to last. That's why anywhere you go, when someone says, oh, you have Super Smash for 64, I'm down. Everyone is literally, literally, I was at an, um, I was at an arcade event in Claremont, California. It's an hour and a half away from where I am. And um, it's called SC3, it was um, Southern California Classic Collectors. And, um, you know, we had a bunch of consoles there. There was an EverDrive with the 64, and they were playing um, Super Smash. And I was playing with three other people the people that I went with, and there was literally a crowd behind us that wanted to play because they were so engaged. And it really just, you know, there are people my age, younger, older, everyone just wants to pl get in on this multiplayer action. Hell, they had, they had a ten-player bomber mat on the Saturn. You know, the, it's those things that that's the reason why it brings more people in, just because of this interactivity that we don't have these days. One of the things that shows me that the retro style of game is popular for other reasons besides just nostalgia is all of the newer titles that are coming out on the digital stores, Steam exactly. Shop, the different, the different uh, company stores that you can, you can get. A lot of indie developers are going back to 2D. They have very stylized graphics. And I, for me, I, I, got in, I can't remember. If it, I guess it was early last year I picked up Shovel Knight. And that mm -hmm. game, I was engrossed in that game for about a week, because it, the sounds, the the control, everything was just like I was back in my childhood. Yeah, exactly. But it, it's a brand new game, and they captured with that game everything that was good about all of the NES and SNES games that you had. Definitely growing up. Well, you know, another game is Castle Crashers. I mean, Castle Crashers was a game that came out of nowhere, and people absolutely loved it. Because you have four people playing, and it doesn't matter what the graphics are. The game is hilarious. The game is fun to play. It's mm -hmm. just one of those games you can sit down and be mindless and then just enjoy yourself. And I, I hope Nintendo is listening to this, because with the Switch and your little doohickeys you flip off the fucking sides, if you take that damn thing and you throw yeah. some games on there that everybody can play again, we will all go out and buy it. Every one it, of us will buy it, and we'll go sit in groups in, in the corner and play that thing with you. So let's do it. Multiplayer all the way, Nintendo. Let's do Local it. Local multiplayer. I want Absolutely. Splatoon four player in the same room. That's what I want. 